everyone, welcome back to the Before the Clouds podcast. On today's episode, I am here with Antonio. Antonio is really great into real estate, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. I uh, appreciate you having me on your podcast today, um, Thomas. And I mean, I, I come I come from pretty much nothing, man. I wasn't fed a silver spoon growing up. And, mm-hmm. and uh, for the, for those of you watching this or listening to this podcast, I mean, I'm here to tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. If Thomas can do it, you can do it. It's, it's all about hustle at, yeah. at the end of the day. And if you can put your head down, hit the ground running, and um, you're going to have a lot of freaking bumps yeah. along the way. And I think that's what uh, differs the the success, success, the superstars like us right. versus people that really give up, like the average people right. per, per se, you know, that, right. that ends up... They hit that first bump, and even maybe they hit, might go to that second bump, and they'll stop and right. give up and be like, you know what? I got punched in the face. Real life, quote unquote, you know, hit me, and I'm gonna go yeah. put in an application at a, a regular nine to five that I really, I really hate. Yeah. You know, yeah. We continue to go. Right. And, no matter and, what. And before we dive into your story, I yeah. want you to share kind of like some of the cool stuff you've done in the real estate first. Mm-hmm. So maybe share like. Uh, how many homes you own or like yeah, people yeah. you own? Yeah, so I mean, I've been in the real estate business for, it's kind of crazy looking looking back at it. I've been in for a decade, 10 years. Yeah. So I came in the game 2009. Bro, I had $200 in my name. Yeah. And uh, single dad, uh, struggling, and I needed a way out to to, to uh, well, a way within, within the entrepreneurship world because I didn't want to go back. I had quit my job to pursue music at the time. Okay. I used to be in the music business, and that just smacked me in the face. Right. That was probably one of my low-end times in my life as a man and as an adult. Mm-hmm. Being a single dad, my house went to foreclosure at the time because in 2007, I was 23 years old, right? And um, I was working... I'm, rewinding this a little bit back i mean yeah. taking you back a little further back yeah. so so i was 23 years old making twenty three thousand a year yeah right and the bank approved me for a hundred and forty thousand dollar loan mm-hmm. can you i mean just do those numbers yeah my mortgage was eleven hundred dollars a month uh-huh. and i'm making only 23 grand a year uh-huh. that was in the bubble of real estate where pretty much i didn't know what the bubble was at that time i mean yeah. I, somebody just told me at my job I was like yeah, antonio you you know you can go I just bought a house, you know. You know, you can go probably go get a own, be a homeowner, be, you know, yeah. the American way, the traditional way. So, I went, got approved for a loan for one hundred forty thousand dollars. They proved me like like that. So that's how you got started. No, I, I didn't. I, oh. my, I was pursuing music at the time. Oh, okay. So, fast forward two thousand nine. Uh, do you think I, I was able to sustain? Doesn't sound like you're yeah. Making twenty three. So. The bus came. Have you heard of the bus before? No. Pretty. About have the you ever heard the Big Short, the movie? Yes, I have. Watch that movie. You haven't watched that movie, by the way, man. But it, it gives you the whole spill of the real estate crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, happened in 2008, 2009. So specifically 2009. And that became the recession mm-hmm. of, like, millions of people around the country went into foreclosure. All these... Um, these 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 loans that we were getting yeah they all just went downhill and i was one of those victims that went to foreclosure i mean it was no way the bank should have gave me a loan yeah for 140,000 making 23,000 dollars a year so man at home ended up going to foreclosure i ended up going back home to my mom and dad and that right. my mom gave me the book rich dad poor dad that's a really good and book from that what I heard. was the book that opened me up to freaking real estate mm-hmm. so i went to a rich dad poor dad's uh workshop start getting to his funnel yeah and he uh so you were a student at the time oh basically, i'm like, still a student i'm yeah. always gonna be a student to right. the game i mean it's never not gonna it's not you were like a novice like if there was a level oh. you were like level one wet behind wet behind the ears didn't know jack shit okay. about real estate but i at the time they they was talking about so many stuff rehabbing short sales owner financing but that one topic of wholesaling mm-hmm. drew my interest a lot more because he was like yeah you can you know, find a deal, put on a contract, assign that contract, and you could still make a, a some. You could still make something called an assignment fee. 
yeah. without owning the property, without having a realtor's license, and you can literally come in and come get in, get out without any money or credit. Yeah. So I was like, dang, I'm, I, I need that. So yeah. I started digging and learning to more real estate. Yeah. In my first year in real estate, I wholesaled 26 deals my first six months. What uh, what year was this? 2009 to uh, 2010. So August, okay. of, August of 2009 was my first wholesale deal check for 12,500 What bucks. does wholesale mean for those who are listening? Yeah, so wholesaling is, is a really great strategy um, for newbies coming into the investing side of real estate and for investor um, seasoned investors to add to their investing tool belt because we yeah. can always have wholesaling in our tool belt uh-huh. for we have other strategies but if we want to wholesale a deal we can make a quick fat check so what wholesaling is is basically you you just say this 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 property here yep just say if you was a motivated seller and you wanted to sell this property, well, we're in LA right now, right? So let's just say, let's just say a million dollars. Yeah, this is not far-fetched, a million dollars. Yeah. And, and so you get this, I can have $500 in my bank account, all right? Most sink, most residential homeowners don't really know too much about real estate. Yeah. So I I contacted you, just say, maybe you ever seen those bandit signs that, that be on the street, we buy houses? Yes. Distressed sellers, Motivated sellers call those signs, believe it or not. Those work. Yeah. Now, it's, comp- it's competitive now in this market, but those still work. I, I don't use those no more, but yeah. I want to bring up that specific mar- marketing strategy because that's what I used my mm-hmm. whole first year wholesaling houses with those little plastic core plastic banner signs. Yeah. So you call that sign, like, oh, hello, you know, I, uh, I saw your sign on the side of the road and I'd like to sell my property. And um, you give me the address, all the beds, baths. Yeah. And I ask you how much you want to sell it for. You say a million dollars. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just go on, uh, just for some qu- quick analysis, real quick. I go on Zillow. Okay. And see that your property's worth one point four. Oh, okay. I'm like, okay. So he's so asking I'm a million. So I'm a really cheap rate because I want to get rid of this. Yeah, property. you're distressed. M- maybe just say this property and this property is in great shape, but just say this property yeah. needed some work. Yeah. And you was like, hey, I haven't, you know, you know, did the, the floors in ten years. I haven't done the kitchen in ten years. I need to sell it. One one million is my price. I got five hundred dollars in my name. I come into your house. I look at it. See, my specialized knowledge is going to get me that deal on the contract right. and get it sold. So I get on a pr- contract with you for one million, mm-hmm. right? I did something called my comps. I looked on Zillow. I had a, um, my agent send me some comparables. Yeah. And I see this matching one point four million mm-hmm. fixed up. Mm-hmm. So I walk away with a contract with you for one. You're the seller. I'm the buyer. Yeah. One million. Yeah. We signed. A, a, I'm happy. Yeah, you're happy. You're, I, I have a thirty day closing period. Yep. On that contract, right? And what is what gives me this uh this requirement to do this is something called an assignment clause in that contract mm-hmm. so i would have my buyer name just say antonio properties llc and or assigns okay on that contract that you sign okay meaning i can assign it to anybody any cash down yeah the street. down the street okay so i'm looking at 1.4 as the resale I got in a contract for you for how much? Million. A $1 million. million. I called Bob down the street. Hey man, I got this property. I know you're looking in this downtown LA area. Yeah. One point one. And then you make a hundred K because yeah. Bob comes in, he's like, Oh, that's a good deal. Yeah, he's like, it's a good deal. Well, I need to put a hundred grand in here or we maybe okay. keep it for Airbnb, even though, you know, just yeah. saying yeah. <laughs> right, whatever his extra strategy is, but his numbers work at one point one. Yeah. He brings the one point one to the closing table. I get the hundred, you get the million. And Bob is fully aware of what you're doing? 100% because okay. my contract with him is called something called an assignment agree, assignment agreement. Okay. We have a purchase, me and you as the buyer, the seller, yeah, we have a, a purchase contract. Yeah. And I will have an assignment agreement saying I'm assigning my rights with this contract between me and you for an $100,000 right. assignment fee. Okay. And that's, you. I've done 26 of those my first year in real estate. And, oh, wow. And I, did I bring any money to the closing table? No. no, the buyer did. So that's no, how he never I was had able the front to, money, which is the beauty of this. Thing, yeah, right? you don't need your credit. All you have to know is have the specialized knowledge, which pretty much I just gave people the the whole concept how this how how to do wholesale deals. Yeah. But you got to learn how to find the, the distressed sellers. Yeah, and you got to know where the cash buyers is. And cash buyers is easy. I mean, that's okay. All these and you said social science. media makes it and internet makes it so easy now to find cash buyers. Yeah, and you said you were looking at street signs in the beginning, and you would call these people or like catalogs, right? What I would imagine would have opportunities for you yeah so well bandit signs yeah bandit signs uh those signs you see on the streets like we buy houses or cash for houses i've seen quite a few in la yeah 
yeah. was driving today. I mean, um, they they had them um, posted up on the on the poles and yeah. stuff. But yeah, the, the sellers call those signs. Right. It's like a mini billboard. Okay. You know what I mean, this uh, omnipresence. If people see that over and over, and they, and that if if they're if that's hitting their pain point for whatever they need or service for they, they need for that, they're yeah. going to call that. Whether it's, you know, you see freaking McDonald's all over the place and yeah. you're freaking hungry okay. and it's like one in the morning, that's the only thing open. Like, damn, like them fries smell good. Let me go. Yeah. <laughs> so people call these we buy home signs and yep. then um, they, someone like me would sell my property to them, right? Yes. Okay. And usually the seller, I mean, we're get, we have something called an equitable interest okay. getting on the contract with you. Even okay. though I'm technically not buying it per yeah. se, that and or a signs clause gives me, oh, yeah, it gives you know me I'm the, a buyer I know other buyers so, yeah. that's going to step into my shoes on yeah. the contract mm-hmm. for an assignment fee. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So essentially you're the one with the billboard technically because you want people to call, call you. As a wholesaler. They call that wholesaler. Right. Yeah. But if you have no money, then where do you start no money at all for marketing period yeah like for your own well I, well then in that case i would start joint venturing with and if we're talking about people that have like dead no money yeah like in. let's say i'm yeah. in college and I just yeah, yes, jump that, in. oh that's a great question so i, w- I would say start start as being an intern for uh, an investor's business like like myself you know okay being an intern and um you know sh- like for example my son I'm, I'm not saying he's an intern but he does like look at the properties for me he will go um um take pictures like today, he sent some pictures and a video of, yeah. of a property I'm looking looking to buy, lot boxes, and I'll give him a piece of the pie, and, then okay. he, and um, he, he gets his money up from that. And also, he does something called uh, slow flipping. is basically like one of my buy and hold strategies. I yeah. won't get too in depth of that, but it's basically a way that I um, acquire my rental properties. So okay. he'll put occupants in my property, and he gets a piece of the, the deposit of the, okay. in his pocket. So okay. I would say be an, you know start with the intern with the local investor in your area or um, joint venture with other wholesalers. So you okay. can focus on so finding what, you cash. You on LinkedIn or Google? LinkedIn is a, a great way to find cash buyers. We, we were talking about LinkedIn the other day, you remember? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, so. So what would you put in the search box when you're looking to um, find a buyer? Real estate, Los Angeles. Okay, and then let's say <laughs> David pops up and I'm in college, I would link up with David, yep. right? And I would say, David, I'm going to get in the industry, but I have no cash. Mm-hmm. And then David would hopefully let me shadow him, right? And if he yep. doesn't, then you're saying, go on to the next person, the next person, the next person. Because mm-hmm. at some point, someone will say yes. Okay. Absolutely. So it's just like we were talking about the DM game. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't cost, I mean, I'm, somebody who's watching this has obviously has some type of internet or Wi-Fi. I mean, yeah. everybody has internet on their phone. So... Um, DMing is free. Yeah. You know, d- d- you know, you have to be uh, aware of what you're DMing. We DM for business purposes and hopefully, you know, getting opportunities and partnerships with different entrepreneurs and business people. Yeah. Um, instead of DMing, you know, trying to holler at a girl or something. That's a, yeah. There's totally really, there's really no yeah. value at no, any day right. in that. So, completely. You know, we DM for, for opportunities. So, DM yeah. for that. You know, just go to LinkedIn, search, really, if your market is in Texas. Dallas, Texas, more precisely, yeah. real estate investing, Dallas, Texas, and also meetup.com. Yeah. It's another killer way to yeah. find cash buyers. So this is something that you can bring to the table. A wholesaler oh. might be, like let's say if you're wholesaling, you're good at finding deals. Yeah. But like, hey man, I got the buyers. Let's, yeah. Let's joint venture on the deals that you bring. And I bring yeah. my buyers and we split the deal. Okay. It's called, uh, it's, it's basically called co-wholesaling. Okay. Um, that's the way I did my first, my first, my first three years. I was wholesaling, and this is, you know, for people that's watching this. If you do want to start investing, um, I felt like I, my first three years, I wholesaled my life away. Okay, right. I should have started. I mean, I was making a fuck ton of money, man. Like yeah. I was making a shit ton of money, but it was just working for the next check. Yeah, and you don't like. I should have. St- I, sh- I felt like after my first year, I should have start keeping some houses for long term wealth instead of monthly selling cash it. flow. I didn't start doing that to my third year into my real estate investing business and I start acquiring them. And I look back, I'm like, man, I used to have properties on the contract for like five, 10 grand. Yeah. I mean, think about it. I used to have a house, a full standing house on the contract 
This, granted, this was 2009, 2010, 2011. Not right now, yeah. If that was a crash, you'd find, yeah. you know, super cheap houses. But it would be sellers willing to sell a house to me for $5,000. Which is a bargain, right? And I was wholesale it to a buyer for fifteen, dollars and I'd make the $10,000 assignment fee. Yeah, and but the, imagine okay. if I would have still with if I would have held just say a few of those. Yeah, and if I was getting my my tenant was giving me five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, I mean just think of think of that man. Yeah. That, that'd be paid off in, in less than a year. Yeah. <laughs> so the so the game in this is yeah. if you have a network of a bunch of buyers, you don't even need money because you can just go on the internet and oh. search for cheap homes, and then you just know they're a 